Rod Machado here. It seems that the FAA wants you to find your density altitude prior to takeoff and landing. So let's say you found your density altitude using the typical density altitude chart shown here. Okay, so how do you use that number? Well, the FAA unfortunately isn't all that clear on how you should put this value to practical use. You see, the fact is that most pilots don't use the density altitude value derived from the density altitude chart for all that much nowadays. <laughs> That's right. In fact, it's rare to find any POH created after 1978 that has charts that plot density altitude to some performance value as they did prior to 1978 as shown by this chart here. It's also rare to find the term density altitude even listed in any POH nowadays. Instead, we bypass computing density altitude and go directly to the performance values associated with a specific pressure altitude and temperature as shown by this chart here. Well, isn't that a more practical way of calculating airplane performance? Yes, it's practical, but not educational, much less purposeful. So let me explain. Because we don't speak in terms of density altitude, pilots are less likely to understand what the term actually means. For instance, ask a pilot how performance changes when density altitude decreases or increases. And when you do, be prepared to see pilots act as if you've just asked them to prove Fermat's last theorem. You see, many pilots are confused by the idea that airplane performance gets better when density altitude decreases and worsens when it increases. Granted, the private and commercial knowledge exams might test this concept, but there's not one FAA exam question that asks a pilot to use a calculated density altitude to compute airplane performance.